Good morning. I am Karen Clymer here at my kitchen pulpit, kneading bread for the Master. What a privilege it is to work for the Lord. You know, it's just great to volunteer and do whatever the Lord needs us to do. I trust you are having a good Friday, and so we're ready to get into our message. The Lord's been laying on my heart. You know how God, I've told you sometimes, He'll give me a word, just a word, and I have to go look it up and find out exactly what He's wanting. The word ancillary. Well, I don't normally use the word ancillary, but the Lord wanted me to study up on it and learn about it. So we're, that's what we're going to talk about today. What a privilege it is to study and to learn and just to get into the Word of God to see what the Lord has for us for today. So then what, may the Lord bless you and help you today as we study. And I've asked the Lord to uh, help me today that I will be able to minister effectively for His glory. That's what I want to do. All right. Ancillaries needed for breakthrough. There's a marvelous scripture that I've loved for years and it's recorded two places in the Bible. It's in 1 Chronicles and also then in 2 Samuel. So I'm going to take, read our text for today. So they came up to Belperazim and David smote them there. Then David said, God has broken in upon mine enemies by mine hand like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they call the name of that place Belperazim. 1 Chronicles 14, 11. Now, if you look that word up and uh, some information that I had read on it, that he was known as the master of breakthrough. God was known, that's the way he looked at it, Belperazim, that the master of breakthrough had given them this great victory. It was, it was something he needed, but he had just been made the king, and here come the Philistines. Isn't that something? When the Lord has got a work for somebody to do, and it's really like in this place where we say everything is important, but this was really a big job serving as king to the children of Israel, you know, God's people. Well, then Satan immediately comes against him to destroy him. But what does David do? He goes to the Lord. And, you know, David wasn't going to win the victory all by himself. Now, God just could have said, okay, David, go and go to, go to your tent and rest, and I'm just going to take care of you. God doesn't normally do things like that. He could, but he doesn't always. He has us helping, working with him. He lets us be in on it, and I, I love that, so I'm so thankful. And you know what we're doing now? I better stop and say this right quick for people who don't know what about kneading bread. Uh, it, need, puts, it blends all the ingredients together. I mix them up, and so now I'm going to what is called kneading the bread for 10 minutes. And it's going to get stronger. And I can already tell you, it is alive. You see, you may not can really see how it's moving there, but I can see it's moving. It's alive. And that's the way we love the Lord and we're living for Him. And He abides in us. We abide in Him. We're going to move. We're going to have, we're not going to be just lousing around doing nothing. And as silver citizens, God uses us. We never age out. Titus 2 tells us. We get to keep working for the Lord. So let's do this. All right. So now, back to David. And he immediately then, here comes the enemy. Now, they were already familiar with David. You know how that when he was a boy, how that he had won the victory over the Goliath. And he gave God all the glory. And God honored him and blessed him. Here he is. Now, you know, that's the way the devil is. He'll keep coming back. And now that David has been made the king, they're after him. I mean, they want to take this man out. But you know what he did? He did the right thing. He went to the Lord. He began to seek the Lord. He said, Lord, do you want me to go out into battle? And the Lord said, yes, he did. He wanted him to go, and he would be with him. Now, you know what? He didn't go out there all by himself. He had ancillaries. He had those subordinates that were there. They were helping. And, and you know, he would have I had like an armor bearer, and he had all this army went out. He was the leader, but then there was these subordinates, the ancillaries. And so never underestimate the Lord be able to use you. An ancillary is very important. It is wonderful to be able to be used of God. You think about this sometimes. We don't usually use that word ancillary, but I know you've had a situation where somebody said, here, will you hold this light while I do this, or something they're doing, and they can't hold the light and do the, the job at the same time. Okay, you were important. You weren't the one actually doing the job, but yet you served as an ancillary, a subordinate. You were there assisting that person. You were valuable to them in order to complete the job. And I think Satan is wanting to tell people, uh, make convince them that you have no use. 
you are of no value. And I, I just want to knock that in the head right quick. Know that God has a purpose for each and every one of us. So let's know this. Victories, as I said, aren't usually won by one person alone. But these ancil ancillaries can provide. You think it as children of God, we're to be the salt of the earth. You think salt is just a simple thing. It's a small thing. But the Bible says if the salt has lost its savor, you know, it's useless. You just want to throw it out. So we want to be people that we are the salt of the earth, that we're polite, we're courteous, and we're, we minister, we, and we're just, everything about us just bespeaks the fact that we're like Jesus, that we're kind, that we're gentle. And he said we are to be the light. We can all do that. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter what your uh, place in life is. If you are rich or poor or in between, we can everyone be salt and we can let our light shine. And you know, I think a smile, you know, that's where the light shines through a smile. That we smile and we're, we minister to people with grace and, and just, it can be simple things that they need. It might be they just need a door open for them, but they don't have anybody to do it for them. You take an older person sometime or somebody that is disabled, we can be, we can be the salt, we can be the light, and don't forget this, your, your voice. The Lord really impresses on my heart the importance of the voice. Let him hear your voice. He wants to hear our voice when we worship him. You know, voices are distinctive. Uh, I know in working in the banking industry, there was people when we picked up the phone and they called in before they ever said their name. You knew them because in some cases their voice would be so distinctive that you just, it was just like nobody else's. And the Lord knows our voice and there's nothing like it when somebody speaks our name. Somebody that you love and when they speak your name, have you noticed that everybody says your name just a little bit different? My husband says my name, which he doesn't call me my name very much. He usually calls me like honey or sweetheart or darling or something good like that. And not that my name's not good, but he says my name different than anybody. And, and this is the way it is. People say our name different. But it's distinctive how they say our name. The Lord knows us by name and he hears, he wants to hear our voice. Yes, when he hears our voice of praising him and Speaking that we love you, Lord, we wake up in the middle of the night and we say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, he knows immediately. And you know the scripture, he said, my sheep know my voice. Yes, we know his voice. And they won't listen to a hireling. Well, listen to that person who, who isn't true. You know, Satan will try to, he'll try to appear as an angel of light. And he'll try to offer things and all. And, but his voice, uh, you know, we recognize that voice. And all the things he offers, they're no good. They're of no benefit. So we know to steer clear. But let's let our voice be heard by the Lord. Let's worship and glorify, magnify the Lord. Let your voice be used for good. When things are, our people are discussing things and, and they, they don't know about, you know, the Lord and they're not sure about salvation and all of that. But you can lend your voice to talk about the goodness of the Lord. And, and just let the, the light of the world just shine through you. Satan always shows up when God has a work for you to do. Anytime the Lord wants to use a person, Satan hates that. And what will he immediately do? He will show up to distract or, or to let you know or tell you that you can't do the job, that you aren't qualified, that you're not good enough. And he'll bring up your past or anything. Uh, there are just any number of things that he might bring up. Don't hide and stand your ground by all means. It's when he brings up your past and all. Well, that's just what it is, the past. It's under the blood. It's forever gone. We just look into the eyes of the Lord and we stand our ground. Satan wants you, hey, come over here. Come over here, let's talk. No, you stand your ground. You're a child of God. You're, st you're right there where you need to be. You're living for the Lord, and you're not going to be moved from your position. Satan wants you over on his territory. I tell you what, God wants to see us stand with the armor. Have the whole armor on. Just be led by the Lord. Have that whole armor on, and that we're 
willing to ju and use it. I mean, know how to use it. Not just that I have it, it's over there in the corner. That's like the people who go out in a boat and they don't put the, uh, the life jackets on. They have them there, but if danger comes, oftentimes they're locked up and they can't get to them. It's, it can be, and it's often a terrible situation. But so let's just use this armor that the Lord has given to us. Let's be ready and say, and stand our ground. We know how to use the sword of the Lord, the word of God, and that we can stand and having uh, done all to remain standing. We're not going to cower. We're not going to run as children of God. We can do that. Remember, ancillaries are needed for breakthrough. The Lord wants to give you a breakthrough in your life. If you feel like, I just don't have a breakthrough, it's just like I'm beating my head against the wall. I tell you what, the Lord is the master of breakthrough. And if you will do these things, since we totally surrender to the Lord, and we put on the whole armor of God, and we you know how to use the sword of the Spirit, and we're trusting, put our faith and whole confidence in, in Him, I tell you what, the master of breakthrough will show up. He will show up. It thrills his heart that we volunteer, that we say, yes, Lord, you've called me. And then, and you know, some people wait until the Lord tells them to do something. I think it's a good thing, just like Isaiah. He said, Lord, use me. He had cleansed him, and he said, the Lord needed somebody to go. Who, who can go for us? And Isaiah said, I will. I will. I want to be that person. What about you? I want to be that person that says, yes, Lord, I've got a light. Yes, Lord. I've got salt. Yes, Lord, my voice, I will worship and magnify you. I will tell of, tell of your greatness and your goodness to me. Yes, Lord, I don't have to be, I don't whether I'm a leader or not, or I'm ancillary. It's fine with me, Lord, however and wherever and whenever you want to use me, I'm going to do that. You know what happened to David? The master of break, breakthrough showed up and had, got a, had a resounding victory as God ministered to them. And you know what was left behind that the enemy had left the Philistines? They were so angry when he was going to be the, the king, and they just had to take him out, they thought. But God had other plans. And remember, it's what God says. It's not what others say. It's what God says. And what God wants you to do, cast yourself upon him, be the salt, the light, you lend your voice to worship and to do the things of God, and he will give you the breakthrough. He is the master of breakthrough. What they did when those the enemy, the Philistines, left behind their idols. You know what David and his men did with those idols? They burned them up. The scripture says they burned them up. And that's a good thing. There's another place in the Bible that I remember reading of how that uh, they, they took down the idols of the enemy, but they didn't destroy them. And what happened when that king died, when his son came, in, you know what he did? He went and found the idols, and they began to worship them. I like what they did, destroy the idol. So if there's any kind of an idol in your life, it may not be one you bow down to, but there's something in your life that is a hindrance to you, keeping you from being who and what God really wants you to be. I tell you what, the master of breakthrough is there to help you, and when you win victory, destroy all the idols. He said they burn them up so nobody else could get hold of them. I love being an ancillary. Love being an ancillary. We should do that. If we're leading or we're not, wherever the Lord wants us to be, we all can offer salt, light, and our voice. And remember, the Lord loves it. He uses all of that. I just am thankful for the privilege to love him and to serve him. I love being an ancillary. Yes, there's work for you to do, and the Lord is listening and waiting. Don't, don't wait. Say, well, he hadn't said he, he hadn't called me. It shouldn't be that he has to tap us on the shoulder. We should be always saying, Jesus, I'm ready to work for you. Anything else? I've been doing this. You need something else for me to do? Lord, I'll do it. You're my Savior. You're my soon coming King. You are my Redeemer. I'm ready to work for you. The Lord loves that. When somebody is ready instead of saying, well, now I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, now I don't know. Don't, doesn't want that kind of a person, but a person that says it's not all about me. It's depending on me. I'm depending on the Lord. And to say, Lord, with your help, I'm going to do it. I can do that. I know you're going to help me, and I love you, and I trust you. Yes, I'll be an ancillary. Ancillaries are needed for breakthrough. Yes, and if there's a breakthrough you need in your life, Jesus, 
the master of breakthrough is there to give you the help that you need. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And remember that there is a work for you to do. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then we can rise to every occasion. Just like this bread, as this dough is going to rise, we can rise to every occasion. And we can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And remember, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. Philippians 2.13 from the Phillips, J.B. Phillips translation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Look forward to seeing you next Friday around 1130. Goodbye.